Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody. Today I am going to uh, talk about pharmacokinetic, how the drug is absorbed and distributed. So, this is a basic lecture. So, I will be uh, dealing with example. Now, when you talk about that how the drug movement take place in the body. Now, if you see that moment you say pharmacokinetic, how the drug absorb, distribute, metabolize, then eliminate it. So, if you commonly call it ADME. Now, once you say ADME, it is refer it to the body does to the drug. That means, there are four process of pharmacokinetic. When the drug is given orally, for example, it absorb, it distribute in the body to the different compartment because hypothetically we divide the body into central compartment, peripheral compartment. So, you can hypothetically call as a single compartment or multi compartment depending on the behavior of the drug. Then the drug once it absorb, it metabolize in the liver or there could be fast pass metabolism. Then it goes to the systemic circulation, then it is eliminated from the body in a form of urine or in the sweat. So, there are different elimination take place, but major elimination through the urine. Now, to understand this process like we employ the PK principle and that increase the therapeutic success. Basically, when you give the drug that how much it absorb bioavailability and how much you get that response, because you have to also see that whether this drug is tolerable because you have to look at that ADR profile also adverse event. So, basically drug you give the drug, it is absorbed, it is distributed in the body and it is metabolized and it is eliminated and ultimately you see the effect of therapeutic success. Now, if you look at the drug transportation, the drug molecule as you know that cell membrane is a lipid bilayer with the hydrocarbon. So, there are various process how the drug is distributed in the body. One is by passive diffusion or another one is carrier mediated mechanism like we have an example of active transport. You can take an example of digoxin like sodium it is acting through the sodium ATPase pathway or you can have a facilitated transport. So, there are different transporter are there. So, that drug is movement is take place with the transporter or with the protein. So, these are some of the example with different method passive and active one. Now, when you take a example of passive transport, the passive transport is basically it dominate the most of the movement of the most of the drugs. So, usually if you see that penetrate by a mechanism diffusion mechanism and along with concentration gradient. So, one compartment to another compartment it is been transferred. Now, if you look such transfer it is directly proportional to magnitude of the concentration gradient across the membrane and to the lipid or water participant coefficient. Like if you see that if it is highly lipid soluble it is easy to absorb or if it is less ionized it is easy to absorb. So, basically if you look at the passive transport there is no requirement for energy compared to the active transport where it is required energy and there is no saturation or there is no carrier. So, it is a passive transport, but active one where we talk about facilitate you require a carrier. Now, what are the factors it affect the passive transport? Like one major point is lipid solubility, more the lipid solubility, it has a more permeability. Size of the molecule is very important. I will talk about different like how the size is affect in case of other barrier like blood band barrier or blood placental barrier. 
So then you will get to know that what is how it is going to affect. Now, one more important point is degree of ionization. So more the ionized, it will take more time to get absorbed from the stomach. Now, important factor is if you talk about the pH, as you know that in stomach, when you give the drug orally, there is a release of hydrochloric acid where pH is 0 0.8. But if you see other enzyme all together, gastric peptide juice, it is pH is around 1.4. So, if you give an acidic drug, it will be more absorbed in the acidic environment. But when you come to intestine, there is an alkaline environment. So, it will be more ionized. So, drug like aspirin will be more absorbed into the stomach because pH is around 1.4. But another point is polarity is also important. So, I will describe in detail the polarity one. Now, look at the example of unionized low polarity or high lipid solubility. So, in that case, if you see that if it is unionized or low polarity or high lipid solubility, definitely it can easily pass through the membrane, cell membrane because it is a lipid bilayer. But in case of an ionized wine, it is going to take time, high polarity or if it is low lipid solubility. So, it is going to difficult to penetrate the membrane. So, that is the reason there is if it is a drug which is less absorbed, so you make it a different preparation also. Now, as I already said that pH is very important and altogether if you see the gastric juice pH is 1.4. So, most of the drug which is weak acid and weak base, it is going to affect with the pH, but in case of ionized, if it is more ionized, it markedly reduces the ability to cross the membrane, cell membrane. So, the degree of ionized is determined by surrounding pH and pK. So, if you take an example of this that how you explain the pH equal to pK log uh, the drug which is ionized and divided by ionized drug. So, if you look at this formula, then you will get to understand that how it is going to affect the factors I am talking about ionization and also pH, you will get to know that how it is. Suppose the pK is numerically it is equal to pH when the drug is 50 percent is ionized. So, you can make a balance that you can hypothetically think that if you give the drug, what is this? Is it acidable or acidic drug or basic nature? Looking at that, you can hypothetically think that how much it will be absorbed in the stomach or it is in the intestine. Now, as I repeatedly saying that acidic drug are reabsorbed are largely unionized in the stomach and it is absorbed faster because of the pH is suitable. But while the basic drug it is once it goes to the intestine because there is an alkaline environment, so it is absorbed more. So, if you take an example of aspirin, it is basically acetyl salicylic acid. So, this is an acid drug is absorbed from the stomach, but once the acidic drug are excreted faster in alkaline urine and basic drug are excreted in acidic urine. So, you can think of that formula and you can uh, just you can uh, you know think of that how different acidic drug or basic drug can absorb and looking at the excretion with pH and polarity. Now, once we describe about the passive absorption, now look at the carrier mediated transport. Now, as I said that passive and active one, now moment to say carrier mediated transport, it is basically a protein in plasma membrane that help in transportation of many of this drug in a physiological solute. Now, moment you say the carrier protein allow the diffusion of ion, for example, small molecules or there could be macro molecules across the biological membrane. So, this carrier mediated protein receptor that bind to the specific molecule substrate like we have a peak glycoprotein needing the transport. So, many of these we have like for example, epilepsy, there is a drug resistant epilepsy and you can also describe that why the drug is not available because of this mechanism passive mediated transport. Now, transported are also bind to the binding site like for example, if you give uh, the moment of the drug, it is by facilitated transport like equilibrate not requiring the energy like for example, with compared with the active transport. So, these protein are mediated by transmembrane movement of the drug that can have a you can have the targeted drug action that it is acting through this protein or carrier mediated transportation. Now, another example of drug transportation is facilitated diffusion. 
So, this is basically a driving force of electromedical uh, uh, electrochemical gradient to the transported solute and what it does is these are the carrier that can facilitate the solute movement out of the cell and it does not require the energy also and this is basically a carrier protein it is highly selective with endogenous solute of the drug. So, you can take an example of lipose you give a metformin with thiamine. So, it is one of the example that you can explain to that is it is absorbed to facilitate a diffusion mechanism. Now, if I want to make it more simple as I said that we describe passive and another is active one. Now, if you take a simple diffusion like suppose this is a bilayer lipid bilayers and these are the drug particle it is ac across it is going across the membrane through the simple diffusion mechanism the particles are crossing the lipid bilayer. Now, if you take an example of facilitated diffusion you can see there are some protein or there are some protein carriers are there. So, with along with the drug particle which is going across the member with the help of protein carrier. So, this is one example that you have a simple diffusion where it is through the diffusion particle it is going across the membrane, but there is a facility where it is required a protein carrier to cross the membrane. Now, coming back to the active transport I have given the example of decoxin. Basically, active transport it required the energy like the movement of the solute against the electrochemical gradient. For example, like we have a sodium ATPase system like I have given the example of digoxin it is acting to sodium ATPase transport. So, this is active transport mechanism. Now, here also you can divide that there are some drug acting through primary active transport which require the gen energy like it cause ATP hydrolysis and there could be secondary active transport which utilize the drug store voltage gradated uh, primary active transporter. So, there are two example of active transport one is by primary active transport and another example is with this mechanism is secondary active transport. Now, there is also mechanism of endocytosis. So, if you look at neurohormonal transmission like you know that there is a process of endocytosis where it is stored neurochemicals are stored in a vesicles. Now, here this mechanism is it is a minor transport mechanism it is involved that there is a invagination take place in a cell membrane and that is how there is a vesicle are formed. So, when there is a stimulus come the vesicle come to near the membrane it get released. So, it is helpful in some of the nutrient like we have a uh, oil soluble fat soluble vitamin like vitamin A, D, E, K and this drug also like you can take an example of insulin also. Now, this include two process like one process is called phagocytosis. So, here what happened that absorption take place through the solid particles and there could be pin cytosis where the cell drinking uptake is fluid solute. So, one is solid particle with phagocytosis another with a liquid you call it pin cytosis. Now, let us discuss about absorption how the drug is absorbed. So, conveniently we give majority of the drug we prefer to give orally, but there is some other also where you have to give parenteral in case of the emergency or in case of the patient is unconscious not cooperative you have to give and depending on the drug also like is it feasible to give orally like for example, peptide you cannot give it orally it will degrade in hydrochloric acid. Now, moment you talk about absorption the basically you can describe it is a moment of the drug from site of absorption administration to the bloodstream. So, basically you are giving a drug it is going to the systemic circulation. So, mostly when you give drug orally it is absorbed to the passive transport. So, if you take a like in a tablet what we do is we give the tablet diss uh, dissolution taste. So, basically you want to see that when you give it orally how much time to solubilize with hydrochloric acid how much time it will going to take for the absorption. So, if you take an example of solid dosage form. So, absorption first required a dissolution where normally in in vitro study the pharmaceutical industry does it any tablet any capsules or any of this control preparation. So, this is basic idea in you know when you give it to the human how much time it is going to take to liberate the drug. Now, for example, Though when you give orally some of this rate of absorption may be 70 to 80 percent depending on a drug, 
So, you have an example of IB where there is no absorption, 100 percent viability is there when you give IB or any of the parental rule. Now, what are the factors it affect the absorption? Of course, it depends on the drug properties. As we discussed from the beginning that more the lipid soluble, more absorption is there, more the polarity. Of course, you have to also look at that molecular weight of the drug. So, any of this area site of absorption is more if there is highly vascular or you have to also look at the total surface it is available for absorption. So, another point is contact time for absorption time, but at the same time you have to also think that some of the drug they have a tissue affinity. Like for example, if you give iodine it is going to go to thyroid because it has a special affinity to thyroid tissue. And route of administration is also important. So, moment you give orally it is going to take time, but if you want to have immediate action definitely you have to go for intramuscular or intravenous or any of the parenteral unit you have you can select. Now, let us discuss about the route of administration. So, more convenient use of any medicine is giving orally. Now, when you give orally which because this is a very common method of drug administration and it is considered to be more safe, more convenient and more economical. Because moment you think of giving a IV, you need, a, you need lot of preparation for aseptic measures or sometimes you have to also take care that it cannot be given in a home setup, you have to come to the hospital. So, oral administration it required a surface area of the stomach which is re relatively small, but otherwise if you see the mucus layer cover the gastric epithelium absorption is slower in a acidic drug and also it is depend on the villi of upper intestine provide and basically if you see that it is extremely large area and presence of food. Because any time we talk about the absorption some drug we prefer to advise that can you take it in empty stomach like you have reform patient, we advise to take it in empty stomach. But many drug we advise the patient that you take food then only you take this medicine because some of the drug like NSAIDs it causes gastritis. So, you have to also see that whenever you give oral administration is it clinically it is interfered with absorption. There could be drug food interaction or there could be drug drug interaction or there could be interaction with other cofactors. So, you have to think that is it going to interact with the food or is it only with a drug drug. So, you have to think of if there is a interaction with the food definitely you have to take in an empty stomach for example, reform patient. Second thing is once the drug is given it is going to go for a absorption then it is metabolism, but many drug if you see that there could be fast pass metabolism like metabolism of the drug during the passage of site of absorption. Some of the people they have a very high fast pass metabolism, so action is less. So, that also before it reach the systemic circulation it is been metabolized at the site of you know absorption. So, this can be avoided by so those drug which have a high fast pass metabolism and it can be given by sublingual like we give a nitrate tablet in case of a MI because it is an it need to be have a immediate action or there could be you can give transdermal or parental roots. So, this is in order to avoid the fast pass metabolism. So, it is important to determine the bioavailability. So, any time you see the drug if it is not bioavailable, so definitely you have to go for other than oral method. If you take it this example of this that you are giving a drug it is going to the stomach and intestine from there it is maybe it is metabolized in the intestinal gut or it is absorbed through the enterohepatic circulation going to the liver. So, ultimately it is going to the systemic circulation. So, you can think that systemic circulation this is a central compartment then ultimately it is eliminated to uh, kidney and it is coming with a urine. Now, as you know that in the market we have lot of control preparation now like if you take an example of rheumatoid arthritis people used to give NSID which is control preparation which is going to go slowly release. So, that because all these arthritis patient like you take example of osteoarthritis they have a morning stiffness. So, you prefer to give an NSID which release early in the morning. So, if the patient sleep at 10 o'clock at night, so if, we, if he or she take the drug, so drug will be released early in the morning, so that period is covered. 
So, we have a lot of control preparation. Thinking app, sometimes you require the instant release, sometimes you require the slow release, sustained release. So, the rate of absorption is depend on the rate of dissolution of GI fluid. So, in this control preparation, we have an advantage that reduction frequently, like if the drug is half life is 4 hours, then you prefer to go for a control release. So, you need not have to give frequently, maybe once in a day is sufficient. So, in order to that, the compliance is also better that he can remember that once in a day he has to or she has to take the medicine. Now, maintain the therapeutic effect overnight as I have given the example of osteoarthritis and there is a decreased incidence or intensity undesired effect. Some people think that compliance is better, but it is also criticized that there could be dose dumping also with the control release. Now, take an example of parenteral one. Like as I said that if the drug is having a very fast pass metabolism, you can think of giving sublingual, you can think of giving transdermal, uh, like there are other method to available is there. Now, in case of sublingual, it is actually protected because it is absorbed, it is has a bypass mechanism. That drug need not have to absorb from intestine or hepatic fast pass metabolism. So, you can take an example of sublingual nitroglycerin because when you give sublingually, it is non-ionic form, it has a high lipid solubility and so there is no fast pass effect. So, you get an immediate effect, immediate effect like patient having a MI give the nitroglycerin, there is a potent vasodilator. So, you can take that example of MI with nitroglycerin. Now, take an example of different parenteral, other than anteral, like you say giving orally is anteral, other than that you have a parenteral, like you have an example of giving intravenously, you have an example of giving intramuscular, subcutaneous. So, do you have an example of parenteral? So, parenteral advantage is that availability is rapid or extensive or you can predict because it is 100 percent bioavailable once you give IV. So, it is deliberately accurately whatever dose you wanted to do because sometimes when you give orally absorption may be erratic. So, you may get the response you may not get, but in case of IV, it is 100 percent delivery it is there. So, basically you prefer that if you have a patient unconscious, definitely you have to go for a parenteral one or a patient with having a psychiatry problem, not cooperative, definitely you have to go for parenteral or it is unable to rely. Like suppose patient saying that I had taken the you know medicine, but exactly medicine has not been taken. So, in order to make a compliance, the parenteral is you know it has been preferred and you know uh, of course, it is required a aseptic mechanism for that. Another example of you giving the drug is pulmonary absorption, you giving or inhalation. So, basically it is a gaseous and voluntary like we have lot of intravenous uh, 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 inhalation anesthetic is there. So, inhale absorption is through pulmonary epithelium mucous membrane through the respiratory tract and it is assessed to the circulation and it is very rapid, the lung surface area is a very large. So, it has an advantage. So, almost instantaneous absorption drug into the blood when you give inhalational one and at the same time, it bypass the you know hepatic metabolism. So, this is basically a local application to the desired site like pulmonary disease. You can give like pulmonary hypertension, you can give nitric oxide. So, this is one example that you can give that directly it can affect that it is a potent vasodilator. Another route of administration is rectal, of course, it is not preferred, but in pediatric population having a fever, you can see the example of giving uh, some of the antipyretic through rectal route. So, approximately if you see 50 percent of the drug is absorbed from the rectum and it also bypass the liver metabolism. So, for example, we give the glycerin suppository for hyperosmotic uh, you know laxative. Of course, it is had a disadvantage that difficult to administration, people do not prefer and also irritant to the site of absorption. So, compliance is very, very poor in a rectal administration. As we discuss about uh, active transport and passive transport and we have also elaborated on how drug is given, when it is given orally and different parental routes. Now, one important point is whenever you give the drug, the question here is how much is bioavailable. So, you need to understand the bioavailability. Suppose, if you give orally, how much it is bioavailable? 60 percent, 70 percent, but if you give IB, as I said that IB means 100 percent it is bioavailable. 
So, bioavailability means that the fraction of administered drug that reaches the systemic circulation in chemically unsafe form. So, basically you need to look at that what is a rate and extent of active concentration of the drug available at desired site, as particularly in bloodstream. So, as I already mentioned that bioavailability when you give intravenously it is almost 100 percent. But when you think of other route, bioavailability generally reduce because if you give the drug orally. So, there could be erratic absorption or there could be interference with the food and other factors and there could be fast pass metabolism. So, the distribution to the other tissue before enter the system circulation is less. So, you can just calculate by using a formula like we already described about area under curve. So, if you give orally, so area under curve the root or divided by intravenously, you can multiply by 100. So, that will give the exactly that how much is bioavailable state. Now, when you talk about bioavailable, ultimately it is absorbed and you need to describe the different kinetic profile. So, basically in pharmacology, if you look at that plasma drug concentration and time profile, you can describe that when it is there is a maximum concentration has been achieved, like you get a peak. So, you describe as C max and the time required to achieve the C max you describe as T max. So, that means the time of the drug that is the peak concentration. So, it is useful to describe that rate of absorption or onset of time or onset of action. So, when you take a drug, if you look at the C max profile, T max profile, you can describe that how it is been given and what is the onset of time or onset of action. So, another important parameter is area under curve. As I said that you need to look at the C max, you look at T max. So, that give a information about how the drug of absorption, rate of absorption or onset of time or onset of action. But another important parameter is area under curve. That means, it is totally integrated area. So, if you look at that AOC, like you can describe that AOC 0 to particular time or AOC to the infinity. So, as the drug is absorbed, metabolized continuously, it is also eliminated. So, you can describe the under plasma level, the time profile and it is expressed amount of the drug comes to the systemic circulation. So, that actually indirectly you can describe by looking at the AOC. Now, look at this curve. This particular example, if you see drug has been given orally and as you see that it is achieving the C max with a particular T max. So, you can calculate the AOC with particular time or to the infinity. Now, if you see this graph, then you can describe that what is a part of the absorption phase, then automatically once it is reaching the peak, it is also eliminating. So, you can calculate the T half, as you know that moment you calculate the T half, around 5 to 10 elimination half life, drug is going to eliminate it and almost 99.9 percent. So, this is one of the example you can describe, but moment you give IB, this part is triply it will increase, it will reach C max and it will get eliminated like this. So, you can describe about behavior of the drug once it is given, how it is absorbed, how it is distributed and eliminated by this graph. Now, question is come is moment you prescribe the medicine, there are different company they market in a different brand name. So, question is comes is one is bioavailability, but as you know that when the product particular drug it is expired after 20 years. So, any of the company can then market. So, they have to establish the bioequivalence. So, what do you understand by bioequivalence? That means, two or more similar doses of the same drug, is it comparable when you give orally to the blood circulation? So, basically bioequivalence, you look at different brand preparation or compare to innovator product about what you look at is it same relative rate or relative extent of absorption. For example, if you take a two brand preparation like we have a phenytoin, 
phenytoin is a narrow therapeutic in the extract. If you take a trade name of dilatin or if somebody else marketed, then see that is it bioequivalent with innovator product. So, basically parameter you look at in bioequivalence like in between 80 to 125 percent of the product would generate. So, if you find this is equivalent, then you make it a bioequivalence. As I said, it is bioavailability you look at, but this is one important parameter any of the product which has been marketed, is it bioequivalent with innovator product. Now, once a drug is absorbed, the question is how it is distributed. As you look at the distribution part, it is depend on behavioral of the drug. Suppose a drug which is highly lipid permeable. So, definitely it will go to the as, a, as you can hypothetically compare the body is a single compartment, but more the drug is permeable like you take an example of propofol, it is highly lipid permeability is there. So, it is going to go to the central compartment, then it goes to the second compartment in tissue or maybe it is going to the third compartment. So, distribution is very fast, but some of the drug which is highly lipid, uh, it is not lipid permeable, highly protein bound, definitely it will be restricted to central compartment. Now, look at this some of the factors which interfere with the distribution. As you know that process of drug getting distributed to the tissue or you mean to say that it get access to the blood that is you consider as a central compartment which the concentration gradient being directed to the plasma and tissue. So, the factor it depend is one is lipid solubility of the drug, second point is how much it ionize at physiological pH and also important point is how much it is binding to plasma protein. As you know that one of this any drug which is highly protein bound, it will be restricted to the central compartment. Now, Another example I had given is there is also important point is if the drug has tissue affinity. I had given example of iodine to the thyroid tissue and important another important factor is blood flow vascularity. More it is vascular definitely more amount of drug will be accumulated in that tissue. So, there are so many factor it is interfere with you know drug having a solubility lipid solubility ionization physiological pH plasma protein binding affinity to particular tissue and also vascularity or uh, to that tissue that these are important factor you need to look at. Now, once it is distributed you need to understand that one of the parameter I said that C max, T max, area under curve, but you need to understand volume of distribution. So, if you look at that body hypothetically 70 kg of body weight, so total volume of the water may be around when you calculate is 42 liters. So, in that so, drug is distributed how much volume of distribution you can calculate. So, volume of distribution it is related to amount of the drug in the body to the concentration of the plasma. So, if you look at mathematically that if you describe V d is volume of distribution, then you can calculate the dose it is been given administered, then you look at the plasma concentration of the ratio. So, this give an indirect evidence that how much drug has been distributed. So, you can calculate one is apparent volume of distribution and it can be defined that whatever drug you had given to the volume of fluid that would accommodate the total amount of the drug in the body at the same concentration as the plasma. So, this give a indirect evidence that what is the apparent volume of distribution of a particular drug. So, it can be called that apparent volume of distribution to all the part of the body equilibrate with the drug do not have equal concentration. For example, if the VD is more, volume of distribution is more, that means more amount of drug that is in the tissue or less amount of drug is in the plasma. So, higher dose can be administered to attain the same plasma because you get the effect of the drug once the drug is in a free state, it dissociates from plasma protein. So, that means to, to attain the same plasma concentration, drug having high volume of distribution then having a low volume of distribution. So, this is one important parameter you can calculate and you can do it practically when you administer the drug. Now, to make it more simplified, for example, if you look at this figure, suppose if you give the drug of 1000 milligram and it achieve in the blood, if you give the injection 1000 milligram, 
that this is one of the example of parenteral, how much it will be volume of distribution. So, plasma concentration is around 50 milligram per liters. So, that means, that means you give 1000 milligram and plasma concentration you already know from the plasma estimation, this is 50 milligram per. So, volume of distribution will be approximately 20 liters. So, you can calculate by this formula in a simple formula with this example. Now, as you know that some of the drug is highly lipid soluble. I have said about so many factors, lipid solubility, ionization, tissue affinity. And if you look at the example that some of the drug and its volume of distribution. Like if I take an example of adalimumab, their volume of distribution is 5 liters. If you take an example of warfarin, volume of distribution is approximately 7 liters. Take an example of very common drug use in a practice is gentamicin, volume of distribution is 16 liters. So, if you look at this board class, it is a small volume of distribution mainly written in the blood. But another example, the median level, if you see, take an example of one of the narrow therapeutic index drug, theophylline, and that volume of distribution is 35 liters. Take a very older drug which is not used right now at, the, at present is in volume of distribution is 140 liters. So, this type of drug where volume of distribution you can make it as a medium that means it is distributed fairly between blood and tissue. And earlier three example we had given it is mostly restricted into the blood. But another type of drug like for example, digoxin is highly distributed. So, if you calculate the distribution is almost 510 liters, doxepin 1600 liters, chloroquine 15000 liters. So, these are the example where large majority of the drug move out of the blood and the tissue. So, just think of a behavior of drug looking at all the factors you can also think that whether it is restricted to the blood or it will be blood and tissue or it will be moved to the tissue including the bulb. So, you can calculate the volume of distribution and you can have a fair idea about behavior of the drug. Now, what are the factors? I have mentioned some of the factors that affect the distribution of the drug. For example, necessarily if it is lipid soluble, water participation coefficient of the drug. So, once it is more lipid soluble, it will cross the you know cell membrane. Then you also also think of degree of plasma protein binding. So, if the drug is highly protein bound, so definitely it will be restricted to the central compartment. Of course, one of the important point is affinity to different tissue. One is second compartment the tissue, third compartment you can think of a you know bones. Then also you have to see that particular person about fat lean body mass ratio. But some of this comorbid condition patient suffering from congestive heart failure, patient suffering from uremia, patient suffering from cirrhosis. So, definitely their distribution it will be hampered. If you give a drug patient is malnutrient, definitely plasma protein will be low. So, it is going to affect the action of the drug. So, you have to also look at the other comorbid condition. For example, I had given is congestive heart failure, uremia, cirrhosis, there could be lot of comorbid condition that you have to think of along with lipid permeability and other plasma protein binding effect. Now, another situation is we get mostly like you talk about you know anesthetic drug like propofol, thiopentan. You have a typical example of redistribution because these are the drug as very highly lipid soluble drug. Once it is given IV, there is a peak concentration take place and it goes to the tissue, again it come back to the central compartment. So, typically in case of a high lipid soluble drug, when it is given IV, it is highly perfused through the vital organs like brain, heart, etcetera. So, later when the plasma concentration falls, again from the tissue, it come back. So, you get a second peak when you draw the line, when you draw the graph. So, this is one example it call is redistribution. So, greater the lipid solubility, faster the redistribution. For example, I had given is propofol, another example thiopentan action is terminated in few minutes. So, it also favor the longer action. So, you get it one peak 
then because of redistribution you get another break. So, typically you call it redistribution and you only get it if it is highly lipid soluble drug. Now, there are some physiological factors you need to understand which actually regulate or interfere with drug distribution. Now, as I said that some of the drug do not cross blood band barrier. In a body we have blood band barrier or blood placental barrier or there are some of the barrier you can take an example. So, if you take an example of blood band barrier basically it is a brain capillary endothelial cell peripheral glial tissue that actually contribute to blood band barrier. So, this also give a protection of brain tissue from a toxic substances and it also limit entry of non soluble drugs. So, there are some transporter it is involved like we have an example that some of the anti epileptic drug do not respond to conventional therapy, patient do not respond and because there is a role of P glycoprotein. So, that is the reason the amount of the drug it is you know enter into the brain is less. So, people do not respond to the therapy because of low sub therapeutic level. So, in case of the blood brain barrier we can take an example that why when you give first generation of antihistaminic, there is a side effect we usually reported is sedation somnolence, but in case of second generation it do not cross the blood band barrier because these are not lipophilic drug, but earlier first generation these are lipophilic drug. You can also think that any of the drug when you give for you know central nervous like Alzheimer's, Parkinsonism. So, you have to be careful that first question you need to ask that is it cross the blood band barrier. Of course, one of the important point is it is a physiological mechanism to protect the brain from toxic substances, but any of the CNS disease if you pretend to develop any medicine it need to be cross the blood band barrier and you have to clear defy. Now, another barrier we are commonly see is placental transfer, there you have to look for the molecular weight. So, this is a barrier which allow the passage of lipid soluble drug by passive diffusion. So, this is very important you know because the drug may cause anomaly. So, any of this drug when you use in pregnancy we avoid almost all the drugs because if there is a chances of having teratogenicity. So, if the molecule is molecular weight is high, so definitely it is not going to cross the placental barrier, but we have to also take, uh, take an example that if suppose though it does not cross placental barrier, but if you give a drug like aspirin, it is should be avoided because it is a prostaglandin inhibitor. So, since it is a prostaglandin inhibitors, it can cause vasoconstriction. So, if you give in pregnancy, there is chances of having a low birth weight baby because of the vascularity of placenta will not be normal physiological one. So, it should be avoided. So, this is one of this placenta is absolute barrier of the drug partly inaccurate because number of influx transporter are also present. So, it is one of this barrier placental barrier you have to see. Another factor if you see that we had already discussed in detail is plasma protein binding. Now, when you talk about plasma protein binding because protein which the drug bind. So, normally when you talk about plasma protein binding it is a albumin. So, you think of acidic drug or you think of basic drug. So, it is albumin or alpha 1 acidic glycoprotein or it could be alpha, beta or gamma globulin. So, if you look at the therapeutic concentration of plasma many drug mainly exist in a bound form. So, you have to see that if it is dissociate then you call it a free drug you get an action. So, when it bind slowly it gets dissociated. So, you get an action of the drug. So, mostly if you see that plasma protein binding it is acidic drug for example, I can give is warfarin, penicillin, sulfonamide, tolbutamide. So, it is bind to albumin, but if you take a some of the basic drug which is bind to alpha 1 glycoprotein. So, you can take an example of quinidine, imipramine, lignocaine, chloropromazine, propanolol, you can take a several example. So, depending on the nature of the drug whether it is acidic or basic, it is bind to either albumin or globulin and slowly it get dissociated you get an action of the drug. So, important thing is plasma protein binding is very very important 
that is what we have to look at it how much it is you know affinity to plasma protein. So, if you call total summarize the thing that we talk about the kinetic profile how the drug is absorbed and distributed. So, some of the important point you need to look at that that how much it is bound to plasma protein because that will affect when you calculate the volume of distribution. Then another thing is the bound fraction is not available for actions. So, that means once it is binding to the plasma protein you get an effect of the drug when it is slowly dissociated become a free drug. So, if you have a high plasma protein binding indirectly you get an effect that it is a long acting drug because it is not metabolized it is not removed by dialysis. So, in case of a you know overdose then also you have to be take care that how you are going to remove the drug by doing a dialysis. So, when you look at the plasma concentration that means you are looking at a free drug for actions. So, like typically example we give for narrow therapeutic index drug. So, drug that medicine only act within certain range. So, when you estimate that that means you are looking at the free drug action. Now, drug which have a bound higher affinity and displaced with a low one that is also very important. So, the most of the time if we, we already discussed that acidic drug do not displace the basic drug and too high plasma protein bound do not displace the other. So, overall if you summarize action of the drug it is need to be understand that how the drug is absorbed looking at the route of administration if you give orally there are so many cofactors are there that how much it is bioavailable or in case of any product you have to look for the bioequivalence. But when you look at bioavailability you have to also see the factors that how much it is bioavailable and that is what we decided go for a parental preparation and in the market there are so many control release preparation is there. So, all these physiological factors how it is passes through the cell membrane and in order to get the therapeutic efficacy. So, that need to be remember and then only we can understand much better about behavior of the drug. Thank you very much.